okay, regarding the examination of the back, as we have learned from the anterior chest examination, we have here a posterior chest examination. First of all, we have to inspect and then to palpate percus, and lastly, we have to auscultate in the following manner. First of all, we have to inspect uh, you have to inspect both areas in the back for symmetry, shape, the expansion, and listen for any heard sound. And uh, you have to detect the intercostal recession for dyspnea if the patient is dyspneic. Also, listen for any uh, wheezes for any uh, strider of the patient uh, had, or he, if he or she had a uh, prolongation in his expiratory phase. After that, you have uh, to palpate. Really, we have three steps in the palpation. First of all, about tenderness, and then vocal fromitus, and then chest expansion. First of all, I should ask the patient about an area of pain. Okay, then you have to detect it. No, 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 no. Also, you have to choose upper and lower zones in the axilla bilaterally. After you detect that there is no uh, pain, you have to check for vocal fromitus in the following manner also. After that you have to detect for chest expansion in the following manner. First of all, try to detect the spinal process number 7 after asking the patient to flex his neck. This is the C7. Below which T1, T2, T3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and here is 10. You have to approximate your thumb in the midline, slightly elevating it, and ask the patient first of all to exhale and then to take deep breath. Okay, this is high. So this is the expansion, or this is the difference between inspiration and expiration. And I'll check it how much. It is about 7.5, the difference between inspiration and expiration. So the chest expansion is 7.5, which is normal, because normally more than 5, more than 8. If it is below 5, it is abnormal, definitely abnormal if it is below 2. All these issues about the palpation and then we have to percuss. As we have learned previously, you have to percuss multiple areas in the bag. Also include the axilla with you. And uh, you have to instruct the patient to perform the following maneuver. And you have to percuss in the intercostal space multiple areas the percussion note should not extend beyond, beyond T10 because T10 is the lower borders of the lung after that you have to detect upper axilla and then lower axillary areas or lower axillary zones after the percussion have been completed and also the same issues, the same finding of that of the anterior chest, you have to check or auscultate the back of the patient and also ask the patient or tell him about the instructions uh, that he should breathe from his mouth, not so deep, not so uh, fast, and you have to auscultate in areas that is not close to, to three سنتيمتر فروم ذا ميد لاين هسه حمادة نفس الحالة النفس على راحتك مو كلش قوي ولا كلش سريع تاخذه من حلقك مو من خشمك ومن اقول لك انا نفس بعد 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 قوي قوي بعد قوي بعد Okay, after that, once you complete the auscultation, you have to ask the patient about the, uh, to say in Arabic 44, for the uh, vocal resonance. Vocal resonance is the same as vocal fermitas, and instead, uh, beside that, we use the stethoscope. It's a Okay, 
uh, you should continue and listen over all areas of the lab. But because he is a volunteer, I'll omit intentionally. I'll omit the rest of the uh, bag. Uh, really, during the examination, if you find an area of uh, consolidation, for example, and so on, and you detect that the patient had a bronchial breathing, you have to uh, you have to detect whether the patient had agophony or whispered bacteriology in the following manner. For whispered bacteriology, listen over the abnormal area, that of a bronchial breathing, and ask the patient to whisper something. I'll ask him to whisper one, and then in the same tone, the same word, I listen for over the normal area for comparison. If we suppose that this patient had here an area of bronchial breathing, I'll perform the whispered bacteriology in the following manner. Okay, the semis. Okay? Yalla, good. Okay, and compare both areas, usually over the consolidated area, over an area of a bronchial breathing, the whispered sound will be perceived and hear louder than the normal area. This is about whispered bacteriology and about agophony. The agophony asks the patient to say e in the following uh, manner, I'll ascultate over the abnormal area as we suppose this is the abnormal area and here over the normal area also for comparison ask the patient to say e. the heard sound if it is a truly bronchial breathing you will hear nasal a uh, in the following manner you ask him to say e. you will hear uh, okay e. okay you have to compare between these two areas this is about egophony and whispered bacteriology. What is there to us from the back? Sometimes the examination committee asks you about the diaphragmatic excursion. Diaphragmatic excursion is performed in the following manner. You have to percuss from above the chest, uh, from the back of the chest, downward, on the right side, because this is the side of the liver here. First of all, ask the patient to exhale a breath. When you reach area of dullness, then ask him to inspire air and detect the difference between expiration and expiration. This difference should be more than 4 to 5 uh, cm and indicate that the diaphragm is ascending up and down during uh, uh, breathing. Okay, this is an area of dumbness. Let's take a breath. Let's take a Became resonant. Resonant. Now it is dumbness. So the difference is that. Allah Rahmatik has taken a breath. It is seven centimeter between inspiration and expiration, and this is the diaphragmatic excursion. Really, you have to present your finding according to the zones and according to the lobes of the lung. How we can uh, know the zones of the lung? Uh, from the back, we have upper zone extending above the T4. And we have middle zone extending from T4 to T7. And we have lower zone from T7 and below. In the axillary, you have to choose an upper axillary zone and lower axillary zone. In the anterior chest, we have the following zone. The upper zone extending above the sternal angle or second intercostal space or second rib. Above it, this is upper zone. Below which is the middle zone up to the fourth intercostal space. Below the fourth intercostal space is the lower zone. So we have upper zones, middle zones, and lower zones. Really, this uh, method is not so accurate. It's just for a clinical presentation of finding. We have to know the other more accurate uh, method, which is the presentation according to the law. From the T1, or uh, C7, sorry, C7 spinous process, here is T1. 
T2, T3. From here, a string is extending from the back, across the axilla, across the axilla, from here, if we follow this line, from here, and then approaches the sixth rib anteriorly. This string will divide the lung into lower lobes and upper lobes. This is with respect to the left lung. And the right lung, when this string extending from T3 up to extending from here, from T3, across the axilla, into the sixth, also sixth rib here, this will classify the right lung into lower lobes and here the upper and middle lobes. How we can know the upper and middle lobes? Really from the fourth rib you have to have an imaginary, an imaginary li line from the fourth rib and to the fifth rib in the mid axillary area. This line from here to here from the fourth rib anteriorly into the fifth rib in the mid axillary area will classify the anterior will classify the right lung into upper lobe, middle lobes. So, in the right we have upper lobes, middle lobe, and lower lobe, while in the left we have lower lobe and upper lobe. These strings are called oblique fissure, the large string one. In the right we have the horizontal fissure. All these about the examination of the chest from anteriorly, from anterior view and from posterior view, and I am greatly thankful for your listening.